Mars. Um, and we're calling in the Independent Referendum Oversight Committee meeting, uh, November 17th, 2023. And with that, we welcome everyone and we'll go through introductions right now. Again, I am Paul Dumars and I'm the chairman um, of this committee at this point. And George Elmore, committee member. Sherry Brown, committee member. Uh, Heather Frederick, I'm the chief financial officer. And then we also have um, several members on the um, on virtual, I want to welcome um, and congratulate Ms. Karen Brill. She is uh, now the new chair of the board, and so I want to welcome Ms. Brill. Um, I see Michael Dixon uh, has joined, uh, Stephanie Callert, um, and, and Patrick Franklin. Uh, Patrick Franklin, and we, I know Mr. Siegel is trying to get in, and so I believe we have Mr. Siegel as well. Yeah, I'm here. Great. <clears throat> Leanne Evans, treasurer of the school district. Gordon Longhoffer, classroom teachers association president. Anna Patricia Morales, office of general counsel. Do we have any more? Okay, we will move on. Um, any public comments? If not, <laughs> we'll. Um, have the approval of the minutes. Mm -hmm. move, for, <clears throat> move approval of the minutes. Second. It's been properly moved and second that we will approve these minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. With that, we will move to new business and turn it over to Heather. Since we did not have a quorum uh, for our last uh, meeting, we have two reports to go over today. Uh, so the, the first report is the last report of our, four our last referendum. Um, so it's the conclusion of the four years. Um, it shows the, uh, the total funds collected for, uh, sorry, the total revenue collected uh, for the, the prior uh, fiscal year 2023 was $275 million. We did have some carryover funds um, from the charter schools, um, so a total of $280 million. There are four main okay. categories uh, where we uh, expend funds on this referendum. Um, the bulk of the referendum is for teacher uh, recruitment and retention supplements, um, so that was $116 million. Um, over 12,000 teachers received those supplements. And then we have uh, art, music, uh, PE, um, choice, uh, career academy teachers for a total of $68 million. Uh, mental health services, $18 million. Total security of $15 million. So for a total of $243 million. Uh, so we did have uh, some carryover funds uh, remaining. We did set funds aside for the charter school referendum lawsuit, which we did settle, and we, we do have a representative from legal who can speak more in detail with that, but we did settle with the three uh, charter schools that had sued the district, um, and that was approved at our, was it our last formal board meeting? I think that was approved. The one before, I believe. And so, and then after that settlement, uh, we sent the funds out for all remaining charter schools. So there was a total amount that we reserved of $60 million. It included $45 million of the total funding for charter schools for the first two years of the referendum, 21 and FY21 and FY22. Uh, we're still uh, working through um, the interest component uh, with those charter schools because we're, we're giving them the option as to whether they want to forego the interest and then have the ability to spend the funds however they would like to spend the funds because we have enough one-time money as a result of ESSER that was uh, built up in our general fund that we can pay for that out of our, our general fund if needed. Or we've set the money aside also within the referendum or a subset of the money aside in the referendum so that for those schools that elect to um, accept the, or 
elect to take the interest, they would have to spend the funds in accordance with the referendum. Because as part of the, uh, the what came out of the lawsuit is that it did say that this, this should come from referendum proceeds. So if they're receiving referendum proceeds, then the um, then the activity should be on referendum approved activities on a go forward basis. So I don't know if there's uh, anything else you'd like to add. No, you've got it. Thank you. Uh, so that's the the 25 million dollars uh, reserve that is set aside. Um, and then there is also an additional amount on the charter schools of $8 million that they have still not spent um, that will continue to carry forward so that they can spend it on allowable referendum activities. A question. You, you 12,000 teachers. I know. Used to be these sheets only had like one teacher in each school. Well, that's for the art, music, and PE. So yeah. the art, music, PE teachers, yeah. those are one teacher to two teachers at each yeah. school. For the referendum supplements, that's for all teachers across the district. So every teacher, dependent on their years of, depending on their years of yeah. experience, receives a referendum supplement. So that's the total of the 12,000. The actual teachers, so that's a supplement in addition to their base pay. And so it's only the supplement that's being reflected here. A thousand dollars, one to five years experience, five thousand, five to ten years experience, and then ten thousand for uh, over ten years of experience. And then with the number of uh, fine art teachers, there's a total of 884 teacher positions, and then those are in our elementary art, music, PE, choice, and career academy. Okay. Okay. And that was the original referendum we received yeah, that started with the quarter mill, started with the total fine arts. Right, right. And then from there, when it expanded to the one mill, we added on the teacher supplements. The 12,000 teachers, is that all the teachers in the it's system? Almost, it's almost all the teachers, because if you have less than a year of experience, you're not eligible. So you have to have at least a year of experience, so it's every teacher okay. that has a year of experience or more. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so that's the, the first report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, motion to motion approve. To approve. Yeah. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposes? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the next uh, report. Right, the next report is for uh, the new referendum um, that was approved by the voters. Um, overwhelmingly in November of 2022. And so this is the, the first year of that four-year referendum. Uh, so the total uh, anticipated uh, revenue to be collected from the property values is the increase in the assessed values is $319 million. We do have $25 million of uh, carryover funds. And so the adjusted revenue is we're looking at is $344 million. And in breaking out, the only difference that we have in this new referendum is as part of our, uh, since we had a 20% increase in property values in the previous year, a 15% increase in the property values in 2023, um, in, in the upcoming year in 2024, sorry, uh, we had additional money in the referendum and so we looked at the activities and the allowable activities within the referendum and we were able to use uh, those funds uh, in the teacher supplements, that additional revenue that was generated, and we put that towards uh, teacher raises. And so we were able to um, give a 7% on average recurring increase to teachers. Uh, $35 million um, is being charged the cost of that raise, $35 million of the cost of the raise is being allocated to the referendum. It is the highest recurring increase that we've given in uh, 20 plus years. Mm. My tenure and, and also Mr. Burke's tenure. Um, in addition to that, there's also a 3% um, one-time bonus that we're funding out of the referendum funds. Uh, so we were the reason why we're able to do that was because of the increase in property values and, and the additional uh, funds generated from the referendum. And so we were very um, I'm thankful and fortunate to be able to provide that increase to the, to the teachers. 
So that is why you see such an increase in the teacher supplements from the last referendum to this referendum is because we added in $35 million of that recurring increase, um, which is just a portion of it uh, into uh, the referendum. Um, the fine arts is expected to be around the same, you know, a slight increase um, in teachers, but we're projecting about $75 million in total spend through the end of the year. It's $12 million to date. Um, total uh, mental health positions, uh, we expect that to be around $22 million. It's $4 million has been spent to date. Um, total security um, is, uh, is projected to be $31 million. Uh, we've spent $3 million uh, to date in actual costs. And in looking at our charter schools, uh, the charter schools still have a significant amount um, to spend, um, but it does, since they are on, they're not on a reimbursement basis, but we do have to depend on them to send us our, our, the reports. So it does take them a little bit more time, um, but currently, you know, they're on track and most likely I do expect that they're also going to have an amount of carryover going forward, but we make sure that we notify their um, external auditors and it, so that they have that set aside in their fund balance as restricted um, so that they, so that we can continue to track it and make sure that they spend it on allowable activities mm -hmm. that are reported to this committee. So based on the amount of, that we've allocated to uh, teachers, the teacher raises, as well as the amount that we've had to set aside for the charter school referendum reserve, we're actually spending um, significantly more than what's anticipated, and we'll continue to update this, you know, as we see actual numbers uh, related to the charter school uh, referendum and which charter schools um, select which option, because if they select the option to forego the interest, it will not be funded through the referendum, and that would free up additional money within the referendum. <laughs> So are there any additional questions? One quick question. Yeah. Teachers with a year's uh, service, what's their pay rate now with all this added? <laughs> any idea? Of the, the minimum teacher salary, I sh oh my goodness, I should, I, I, let me get, I will get you that I number. Can, I, I, I will look at. I can answer that. Okay. It's 52,500. Why did 51. it? 51. 51,500. 51, and because they do not receive any of the, if they have one year's of experience, or if they have, if they don't have at least a year's of experience, they do not receive the $1,000 supplement. Okay. Um, but the years of experience includes outside of the district as well. Uh, so if they have come with experience to our district, mm -hmm. that is included within the referendum. Mm -hmm. So it, that would only be a brand new teacher who's out of school that has no experience at all. Okay. All right. And thank you, Ms. Brill. I don't know why that just <laughs> it completely, <laughs> it completely left, left my mind. So, so thank you for that. Thank you, too. <laughs> <laughs> We were very excited to get above because we were at 49,000, so we were excited to get, get above, above um, and to be at 50, uh. Uh, above $50,000. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. So can we get a motion to approve yeah. this report? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> All in favor of approval? Aye. 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 Thank you. We will move on. Um, the IROC report to the board. Right. So as part of what's re a requirement of the IROC is that there's an annual report to the board. And so I would need a member to uh, volunteer to report at the December uh, 13th uh, board meeting. I have a draft report uh, repair, uh, prepared. Um, I use the same format as previous years. So I don't know if there is a, a board member who, or a committee member who is av available on the 13th to report to the board. Um, if no one is available, we can do a written report. Okay. When did you say, December 13th? December 13th. Ooh, I'm out. I got a public hearing in North Carolina that night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know that that sounds like fun. <laughs> Hearing none. Uh, then, then we can just do a written report to the board, which is, that will be fine. And Thank if you. there are any comments um, on the 
uh, on the report, you can just forward them to me and then I can share any changes uh, with the committee. Thank you. I've actually uh, presented the report before. My life has changed after five o'clock. I've got all kinds of things going on that I'm committed to, so I don't. <laughs> Okay, thank you. It's um, usually very short, Tommy. That's one good thing, but you don't know when it's going to come on the agenda. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> okay. With that, we will move to the um, chair selection and the vice chair selection. Okay, so the next item is the selection of the chair and vice chair. Board policy 1.09 requires the committee to select a chair and vice chair at the first meeting after the start of the school year. So we will start with the selection of the chair. An advisory committee member selected by committee members to serve as the chair shall be limited to four consecutive years as committee chair. The current chair, Mr. Dumars, has served four con consecutive um, terms, um, so he is not eligible um, to continue. Um, and so it, can I receive a nomination for the chair? I'll nominate George Elmore, since you're vice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting kind of old now. You got to remember this. <laughs> It'll keep you young. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there? Are you willing to accept the nomination, Mr. Elmer? Oh, well, definitely. I, I know I've got another year at least. Oh my so goodness! Okay. <laughs> I'll keep you advised. Okay. <laughs> you have way more than that. I mean, are there any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of electing uh, Mr. Elmore to serve as chair, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, any opposed say nay. And so I don't hear anybody. So Mr. Elmore, you've been elected with unanimous support. So thank you very much for your continued participation with the, this committee. How many years have I been here? <laughs> It, you, I think both you and Mr. Dumars have been here since the beginning, day, so it would be one, since 2012, yeah. right? Yeah. At, at least. Wow. So, so thank you. Thank you both for your continued right. participation. Okay. So the next is the selection of the vice chair. So there is no term limitation on the vice chair. So can I receive a nomination for the vice chair? Are you okay? I'll nominate Paul Dumar. This is the third or fourth time we just flipped. <laughs> I'm committed, whatever, you know. Okay. All right, thank you. Are, are, are there any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of, of electing Mr. Dumars as vice chair, please signify by saying aye. 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 Um, okay, all opposed say nay. Okay. So. I can now say, you know, thank you, uh, Mr. Dumars. You've been elected as vice chair with unanimous, unanimous support of the committee. All right. So with that, our next meeting is February. February 23rd yeah. uh, at 9 a.m. We're back to our normal time. Mm -hmm. And there's, we don't have anything else. And I just want to thank Ms. Brill one more time for, uh, for your help on, on the, the starting teacher pay. <laughs> Okay, then we are, if we don't have any other <clears throat> things to discuss, we will adjourn this meeting. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. And then for those of you that are participating on ISOC, that meeting will start um, at 11 o'clock. So we just have to change over our computers and, and the meeting will be back up again. All right. Thank you all. Thank you for participating. Thank you.